Um, so indeed, I'm going to present you ViewFlow. Um, this is a fra framework we build um, specifically for data scientists to be able to write data models or, or views, as we will see, um, without having to write um, any Airflow code. So just a quick um, a quick presentation about me. Um, I'm a computer scientist. Um, I did a PhD in human-robot interaction, and I'm working as a data engineer um, at DataCamp for almost uh, three years now. Um, Today's agenda, uh, before diving into ViewFlow directly, I'd like to take a, a step back um, and give you an overview of our data flow, our data pipeline uh, at DataCamp. And then I'll focus uh, a bit more on how do we run transformations, um, which will uh, allow me to uh, then introduce ViewFlow uh, in more details. And I'll conclude the presentation with a, a few uh, a few notes. So um, our data data pipeline. Um, we're using the ELT approach, so extract, load, and then transform uh, approach. For the extract and load steps, we're using Fivetran uh, to ingest our data to our data uh, data warehouse. So Fivetran. Uh, extracts and loads um, our operational data, so the, 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 the data uh, generated by the DataCamp website. Um, but we're also using Fivetron to ingest uh, external, uh, external data sources, just like URL, Salesforce, and, and a, few, a few more as well. So once the, the raw data, so the data copied or um, ingested by Fivetron is in the data warehouse, this is where we start the transformations uh, of that data. And these transformations are um, done by our data scientists using R, SQL, uh, or Python. Finally, when the data is transformed, we have um, useful information for the company that can be uh, queried by our business users. Um, we're using Metabase or Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, we're also using internal tools to connect to Redshift, and that allows um, our users to, to query the data produced by um, our data scientists. So let's um, have a look at these, uh, this uh, transformation step now. Uh, internally, we call, uh, we, call the result, we call the results of these uh, transformations views or materialized views. Uh, so there are views or tables in, in Redshift, um, Redshift being our, our data warehouse. And these views are the results of um, complex data manipulations or complex data transformations. Uh, could be uh, aggregations or joints between multi-billion row tables. Um, and, and, and these transformations uh, are based either on raw data, so the data coming from Fivetran, or can be uh, created from uh, other materialized views. So we can have views that are used to create other views. And once the transformation step is, uh, is done, uh, is completed, we have a set of views uh, that we call uh, that 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 creates um, a data model, and this data model, these views uh, are considered as the data source of truth for the company. So, how do we uh, run these transformations? Uh, so, as I've uh, shown already, we are using Fivetron to do the extract and load steps, uh, but for tr the transformation steps, uh, it's on us. And it wouldn't be an Airflow presentation at the. Uh, it wouldn't be a presentation at the Airflow Summit if uh, we weren't using Airflow, right? Um, so we are using Airflow to uh, kick off and and conduct these uh, transformations. Just a, a few uh, stats here. Nothing really uh, incredible, uh, but we have 19 DAGs. Uh, that are specifically used to uh, create these views or these uh, data model. Uh, the DAGs, we try to separate them uh, into business units so we can have a few DAGs per business units, uh, trying to have some co coherence there. Uh, obviously, we have other DAGs as well for uh, other data pipelines, but these 19 DAGs, they are really used to create uh, the data model, so the, the, the views. 
And these 19 DAGs generate uh, about 500 views. Uh, it's quite a lot, uh, but these, uh, not all of these 500 views um, are intended to be queried by our end users. Um, a fraction of these views are what we call technical views. So they are views to create other views, uh, just like I've said before. Uh, and another fraction of these views are really intended for the business uh, users to uh, to be queried and to, to retrieve useful information. Uh, I'm not going to uh, teach you anything about uh, Airflow really here. I just want to uh, make sure that we are on the same page. Uh, usually when we create a new DAG in Airflow by using the Airflow API, the, the Airflow framework, there are three main steps. Um, we have the DAG definition, DAG instantiation, and then we have to create the tasks by instantiating the, uh, the operators. Um, and then we have to set the dependencies between the tasks. And at the end of these uh, three steps, we have, um, we have a new DAG. Uh, but as you all know, uh, DAGs can be quite complex. Uh, we can have many, many tasks. We can have many, many dependencies between these tasks. And the, the dependencies can be either, as you know, internal or external. We can depend on tasks uh, that belong to the same DAG, but we can also depend on uh, tasks that belong to another DAG. So that makes the workflow, uh, the creation of the DAG, um, quite uh, quite complex. Um, let's let's see um, uh, let's see at what would be the three uh, main steps for a data scientists to add a new view uh, into a DAG. So first, uh, the data scientist should um, write the SQL code or the R code or the Python code or whatever the code that produce uh, produces the, the the content of the view. Then um, the, the code is written, uh, the, the data scientist should you know, include this uh, new view or this new task uh, into the DAG, and uh, the data scientist would therefore uh, edit the, the DAG scripts, uh, the Python scripts that uh, define the DAG and the tasks and the dependencies to finally set the dependencies correctly for the new, uh, for the new DAG, uh, for the new task, sorry. Uh, but, you know, because, because DAGs can be quite complex, uh, it might quickly become a nightmare. Uh, in this slide, in, in this example, you, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm hearing uh, lots of people screaming at me, saying that, uh, hoping that this is not the way I'm writing DAGs uh, at Datacam. It's definitely not the case. I just want to emphasize some of the aspects of uh, the DAGs creation. Uh, for a data scientist. Um, so obviously there's a lot of code repetitions here that shouldn't be there. We can write functions uh, to help us uh, modularize the code. We can, uh, we could be, we could base uh, our DAGs based on uh, YAML, fi YAML files or JSON files. Um, that's that's perfect, that, that, that's true. And we have, there are talks uh, that will present that in, in, these, uh, in this conference. Um, and, and that's a perfectly vi vi viable solution, of course. But if a data scientist wants to add um, a new task in a, in a, in a DAG, uh, even if it's uh, based on uh, configuration files, the, the data scientist should, you know, at some point define the task, but also define the dependencies between these tasks. And because the dependency there can be there can be quite a lot of dependencies, um, it can be it can quickly become a nightmare. Um, whichever the solution is uh, is used to generate the DAG. So if we um, look back at the th three steps that a data scientist should uh, should you know um, follow to add a new view or a new task in a, in, a, in a DAG, we um, we see that only the first step. Uh, produces business values for the company. Um, the two other steps are time consuming and potentially error prone. Um, if the data scientist doesn't set the dependency correctly because of the amount of dependencies, for instance, um, we could quickly have uh, views uh, that, are, that contain uh, wrong data, basically. 
And that's why we, uh, we created Viewflow um, that uh, address uh, for us these, uh, the, the, uh, this problem. So Viewflow is, um, as I've said, a framework that we built on the top of Airflow and Viewflow handles the creation of the, the DAGs. It handles the creation of the tasks and uh, even more importantly, maybe uh, it automatically um, manages the, the task dependency. So it creates automatically and figure out automatically the dependencies uh, between, between the tasks, uh, be it internal dependencies or external dependencies. So let's have a look at what it would be to use Viewflow for a data scientist to add a new view. So let's take the, the example on the top, the SQL example. Um, so a data scientist will write a SQL query uh, as a form of a select uh, query, a select statement to create a new table, a new view in the data warehouse. So the data scientist will create uh, a SQL file, a new SQL file with uh, some metadata like who's the owner of the um, of the view that the data scientist is creating? Who? What's the description? So, what does the view? Uh, what does the view do? Uh, what are the, the 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 fields, the columns of the views, and their descriptions, and some some metadata like that? And then the data scientist writes the the SQL query that produces uh, the content of the view. In this example, it's a four line, a very simple four line query, but it can be uh, obviously a very long and complex uh, query that aggregates um, uh, data and columns um, to produce the, 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 the business uh, insights, the, the useful information. And, 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 and for the rest, uh, Viewflow uh, takes care of it. Uh, Viewflow automatically creates and adds the task to uh, its DAG, and it automatically figure out, uh, figures out um, the, the task dependencies. Uh, it does so by uh, parsing the SQL query, or in the case of the Python code, the Python view, it does so by parsing the code. Um, and looking for uh, other views, other Airflow tasks used in the query to um, use in the query to set the dependencies correctly. And it can do that, uh, as I said, for internal uh, tasks and ex external tasks uh, as well, as long as they are uh, created by uh, Viewflow. So what's the uh, view flow flow for a data scientist who wants to create a new DAG? Um, data scientist creates a new directory with a, a configuration file, a YAML file that contains high level airflow um, parameters values. So um, very likely this is a file that won't change very often. Uh, it con contains parameters like um, when should the DAG, the DAG start, uh, who's the owner of the DAG, uh, et cetera. So nothing that should change uh, uh, often. Then in the directory, the data scientist creates the SQL, Python, or RMD files. Uh, they write the code that produce the content of the view. And then they commit and push to Git. In our case, at DataCamp, we're using GitHub. And then the, the, the GitHub repo is synced to our Airflow DAG direct, uh, directory. And once the uh, Airflow, uh, once the uh, repo is synced to our uh, Airflow DAG directory, Viewflow takes care of uh, creating the DAG, creating the tasks, and creating the uh, dependencies correctly. So Viewflow has um, some uh, signific significant uh, impacts. Um, firstly, um, it improves the, the, our data scientist quality of life because Viewflow supports different languages like SQL, Python, and R. The data scientists can choose their preferred language or at least the language that is um, best suited for um, uh, creating the view. It also reduces uh, context switching in the sense that uh, because the data scientist doesn't have to deal with uh, or write any airflow code, 
um, the data scientists sorry, can really focus on um, data science code. Uh, everything else is handled by Viewflow. Um, and a consequence of that is that it, it increases the, the data scientist velocity um, because, because all of the time that the data scientist doesn't spend on data engineering stuff uh, or airflow code, they can, <clears throat> they can spend their time, this time, <clears throat> on um, creating new, uh, new insights um, uh, or new views. So I will conclude these presentations with um, um, a few a few notes. Um, firstly, we are using Viewflow in production for around uh, three years now, um, and it's been used by uh, data scientists, of course, uh, but also by non-data scientists. We've seen uh, software engineers who needed um, uh, who needed some specific data to monitor monitor their um, their um, uh, application, and they manage to create a new view uh, themselves without knowing even what Airflow is. Uh, so they create a new file, um, uh, did a PR, uh, did a PR, and the data scientist merged the, the view to um, to the master branch, which uh, which uh, merged the PR to the master branch, which eventually uh, created the the new view for the the data engineers. We've recently open sourced Viewflow. Um, you can find it on GitHub. Um, there's a Docker-based uh, demo. Uh, please have a look at it. Uh, try to play with it. Report us uh, any uh, bugs uh, that you find. Um, and of course, we um, would be very happy to, um, to welcome collaboration and NPRs um, uh, for Viewflow. And uh, maybe a final note on the open source version. Um, it currently supports Python and SQL. I mentioned a few times that we, uh, the data scientists, can also uh, use R to produce the, the view. Um, that's the case in our internal version of Viewflow. Uh, it's not yet the case in the open source version, but we have um, a data engineering intern, uh, Peter, who is working on it at the moment. So hopefully, uh, in a few weeks uh, from now, um, R will be supported in the open source version. And the, the reason the reason why we have two versions, an internal one and an open source one, is just that when we started writing Viewflow, we didn't, unfortunate, unfortunately, we didn't um, write it with um, open with the uh, the idea of open sourcing it. Uh, from start, so we have some parts of the code that is tied to um, our environment and which wouldn't be, uh, which couldn't be used as is by um, by another users, uh, another another user or uh, another company. So we are slowly, uh, but, uh, slowly um, trying to make the two versions converge so that we have um, we will end up with having only one version and we will be also using the open source version at data camp um, but hopefully by the end of the summer uh, we will um, we will get there or at least um, close to there and and that's it thank you thank you very much